Landing pages are the cornerstone of products. These are the, one of the first early pages that you would send your customers to so that they can take an action on your product. These actions can range from signing up on an emailing list so that they get notified when the product launches, or you can direct them to signing up for the product as well, or even clicking on a product to buy, depending on what your business needs are. And in today's video, we're going to be focusing on building a landing page using bubble.io. We're going to be looking at these four areas within Bubble to um, use so that we can build our landing page. So we have a text input to capture the email address, uh, looking at custom data to save uh, the email address within Bubble's database, and looking at input validation to ensure that a correct email address is used. And we're going to connect everything together using workflows. So let's get into it. So with the input uh, box, it will be something very similar like this. Then we're going to add a button to say that a submit to click. We're going to help the users out by adding a placeholder text to say enter email address. Uh, once they enter in the email address, then upon clicking submit, We'll send that email address into the database using our custom data address, and that will be stored in Bubble's database. And we'll connect everything so that once everything works correctly, the user will get a notification saying, thanks for submit submitting your email. That's it to build this uh, simple landing page using Bubble. Okay, enough talk. Let's jump into Bubble right now and let's start building this thing. Bubble, and I'm going to start this as a new app. So what we're going to call this is landing page. And for this, we don't need a template because we're just creating a simple page. Um, and then go of application. Yeah, I'm just playing around. What kind of app? Any page when you want to launch it as soon as possible. So that's this month. So let's create this. So here we can see Bubble creating it, just waiting for it to get everything in place. All right, so this is Bubble. Um, as a boilerplate, they give you all this stuff here. Um, for today's um, exercise, we won't need that. Really. So we'll just start with a blank page. And click that a blank page. So if I click preview here and that will open everything up in a new window. Nothing that interesting right now because it's just a blank page. So let's go back. And let's add something to it. So the first thing we need is some text. So there's a text thing here or an input. Um, what we want to do is capture user input. So we're going to drag this into the page. And then the other thing that we'll need is a button. To there we go. Uh, that looks like a button. We'll make that the same height as that. So we we'll call this submit. And we just change the text inside this box here. And then in here, we'll have the placeholder text as enter email address. Cool. Better. And then I'm going to work over here like this. Keep this over here and keep it clean. So, email address. Okay, so if I go back to here and I enter an email address, you can see that it does the hovering for you. That's automatic. I just bring it here. Click submit. Nothing happens. Um, so, why is that? Because we haven't hooked up this to do anything yet. So, what we want to do is start a workflow. So when this button, button submit is clicked, we want to add an action. So what do we want to do? We want to create a new thing. Uh, so a thing is, in this example, we're going to create a, t a new type called email. And email there's no field, so we're going to create a new field and call that email address. 
and this type is a text and we'll create that and this email what we're going to do is take the value of it from the input values cool that's it so we have that now so if we go back over here it'll tell us that we need to refresh so we'll click on that and let that refresh now when I enter an email address, gmail.com, I click submit. We told it to create a new thing. So if we go into this thing, which is data, our database, we'll see that the new custom type that we created called emails is there. And then we look at the app data, we see that, oh, there was something that was created. But we didn't get any feedback. So that's what we're going to look and improving right now. So if we go back to here, what we need to do is have an alert that uh, will pop up. So we try this here. And what we can say is that we can position this alert at the top. And there's yes, standard alert we'll do for fine. Thanks for submitting your email. Okay. okay, so we have that in place. What we want to do is make it visible when we click submit. So after we create the new email in the database, what we want to do is go to element actions to show a message on the alert. And that's it. So We're happy with the alert message, so we don't need to change the alert message. So we can go and see how this works. And this time, if I let's call it second, and now we get thanks for submitting your email. That's cool, but what's not really good is that. I submit it and it should just clear out the form. Um, and we can just double check in here to say that refresh this page. Click on emails. We can see that the second one came in. So that's good. Now we want to show the message and we also want to clear the form. Element actions, reset inputs. That's all you need to click. Um, Bubble is smart enough to know that the input to clear is the email field. So if you do try this, refresh the page. You can either refresh using your browser up here or clicking the bar up there. So third, gmail.com, we click submit. This time our form is cleared and we got that notification. So that's, that's looking pretty good. Um, but what happens if I enter an invalid email like this? Oh, it says thanks for submitting your email. We go into our database and we refresh this again. We click on emails. You can see that, that that invalid email came through and that's not something we want in there. So we want to prevent this in the future. Um, so this is called input validation and when we go into here we can click on this form here the content format here is text but if we change it to email so this will by selecting the type it will check that it's a valid e email and the input should be empty so that looks good so now if we go back into here and I click blank the the input field turns red now and all i needed to do there was just change the input type to email and bubble that will do the validation for us so that's valid so now now that, that that that's a valid input it no longer has that red bar around it border the red border around it so i'll click submit it says thank you for submitting your email and then if we go back into here we can just refresh that emails we 
can see that that's correct in there. And just to clean up our database, we can click on this and click on delete. And that's how you remove un unwanted data inside your database. You have all of this information here around created date and modified date. This is useful to see when things came. All right, if you made it to this point, congratulations. You completed the tutorial on how to build a simple landing page. Today, we learned how to connect an input element on the UI and then save the, those contents directly to the database using custom data. And you did this all today without using any code. In the future, I'm gonna follow up with this video with another to help elevate this landing page using custom styling. To help others find content like this, I would really appreciate you giving this video a like. And if you want to join me on this journey and get updates of videos of more things to build products without code, then click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notified when the new video comes out. So bye for now and I hope you join me again in the future so that we can make better products together. Bye!